I know you as you know a programmer, developer, coder, an entrepreneur, um, an investor, uh, a crypto expert, a good friend. But what else do you consider yourself? I was primarily a technical person for most of my career. And uh, I yeah. mean, I've been a software engineer for the longest time. I I was lucky enough, I, and I never knew it at the time, but I was part of ecosystems that even mm-hmm. though my skill set was software engineering, they, they, were, they were always sort of like, well, that's not good enough. You know, like that's your specialty, but we need you to be more broad. We need you to be a business analyst. We need you to be a project manager. We need you to be this. We need you to micromanage. We need you to do this. We need you to do that. And at the time, I was yeah. very upset with them because all I wanted to do was code. But code. let's fast forward 20 years. And here I am. And even though my specialty is still software engineering, thanks to many people in my past, I've been able to sort of accumulate multiple skill sets uh, ranging across various um, sort of various skills. And I've been able to like articulate. Uh, I had an awesome client of mine tell me today that I'm quite good at articulation, even though I'm a technical person, which I thought, okay, well, that that that's sort of like a good check mark. And, um, but more importantly, even though, and, 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 and when, when, when Web3 came, this was so cool. This was so interesting. When Web3 sort of spawned upon us, it, it was challenging our skill sets, no matter who you were. So like if I, like for an example, in my case, like if I want to be a part of Web3 as a software engineer, it wasn't good enough that I was just a software engineer. I needed to understand finances. I needed to know how money works. I needed to know how the markets work. I needed to know all these sort of underlying uh, uh, items that Web3 was designed yeah. around because Web3 is, the, is, is basically designed around money and it's designed around currencies, yeah. but, but on a technical level. I think that's a huge um, piece that, that, that folks, folks like, like you, people, people bring, bring to the table. Like if, you, if you're a tech person and you can explain things in a way that people can understand, that's huge. And it seems like that's the main thrust behind um, Money Quest, right? Yeah, it, it, exactly the case. Because <laughs> Web3 was, and, and I think a lot of people don't realize this, is that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and everything, they're designed by techies. <laughs> so, so like, yeah. now, now everyone wants like, oh, we want a part of that. And and it's like, well, um, okay, no worries. You can be a part of this. Just follow these 50 steps. <laughs> you know, and, right. and and I mean, people people just jump off at step 10. Uh, if they're lucky, if they even got that far. So Web3 and crypto and blockchain, were, it, it, it's it's life-changing, innovative technologies, but it was designed by technical people. So what's happening is that it's mm-hmm. leaving out the majority of the population because they don't have the know-how to be a part of this. And and that, yeah. that, uh, uh, that, that was a big problem for me because in my world, I am the black sheep in my Portuguese family, <laughs> which consists of like 250 <laughs> odd people. My Portuguese family is like we yeah. 250 strong, but I'm not the one who landed up going and working in a shop or grocery store or fruits and veg. I'm the one who landed up becoming a technical person. And the problem is now um, I'm seeing all this opportunity in the Web3 space. But my family has been left yeah. behind because they don't have what it, they don't understand how to set up crypto wallets and and transfer between different blockchains. They don't know how to do any of that stuff. And I think that's where right. Money Quest sort of spawned is because it actually spawned out of anger. I was upset. I was upset that all the money is now flowing in an ecosystem that is eliminating 99% of the population at the moment. I think, I think I think, think this, this is the the key, key right? You're bringing what you're bringing is the the knowledge and ability for people to come inside um, from a completely I don't know what I'm doing kind of standpoint, completely non technical standpoint, and just have access. That's you know that's what you've changed. And I mean, it involves a, l- a little bit of trust, right? Because what yeah, I'm doing, sure. and, and I learned this, I actually learned this from a program that I joined many years ago that was based around um, 
neuro-linguistic yes. programming, right? And, yeah. and, yep. and this guy that brought out this program, apparently he was like a specialist, specialist with NLP at the age of 16 already. And then like he came out and he's like, okay, I've got this program. But, and the program was relatively affordable. And I was, I was very curious. I was like, okay, I'm all, I'm on board. I want to see how like you can <laughs> to, to of course. change people's yeah. perspective and, and, and sort of lead them into uh, being a part of what you want to do. And what, uh, but, but what I loved about this person is that he sort of said, well, I, I'm coming, by the time he uh, let out the program, he was already in his 40s. So he's like, I come from about 30 years of NLP brainstorming and experience and studies and all that kind of stuff. So you have a choice. You either want to either follow what I'm doing and trust me because to be proficient in NLP, you don't necessarily need to know how it works. You just need to follow my formula. And, uh, 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 and because in order to know how it works and in order to do that, that's going to take years, but to follow my formula, is going to take days and just, <laughs> just do what I say and, sure. and you will, and you will become proficient and you will sort of give, uh, be able to do NLP or, or, or all that kind of stuff. And right. what happened with the guides on, on money quest is, is it's almost the same thing. It's like, okay, we are, we are in the back end spending copious amounts of money doing crazy stuff, trying to understand what the crypto markets are doing, trying to understand where the money is, trying to understand how to be a part of that as a general user. Okay. So by the time you get to MoneyQuest, which is obviously MoneyQuest.club, you, um, we give you these guides and these guides say, do this and earn this. Uh, uh, but if you want to know, oh, but John, how are you doing this? Why are you doing this? What? Well, that's that's advanced. <laughs> so, if you trust me, just do this and <laughs> and and earn, and we'll we'll take care of the hows and the whys or whatever the case may be. And I think that's how the guides came to to be on 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 Money Quest site, you know. And I think I think you're taking it one step further though. Like it's 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 good enough to have something on there that says here do this and you'll earn X Y Z. But when when people don't understand, we're also trying to help them individually, yeah. Yeah. you know. And and that part is the part that a lot of people just go, well, I'm not even going to try because if I get stuck, what am I going to do? Well, now they have somebody to talk to, send questions to, you know, guide them through it. So I think that's why MoneyQuest is special. It's not just because we're help, we're we're testing everything and trying to give you what's best, but it's also because we're trying to help directly and and. and you know, personally. Absolutely. And I think that the, 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 yeah. even the bigger part is that we're creating opportunities as well. I mean, we did it the other day and, and we got the DAO that, that, that we started a week ago and then we managed to raise like $240, which was awesome, yeah. right? In one week, yeah. we raised $240. And we've empowered multiple premium members of MoneyQuest. Talk about that. Like, like that's, that's, that's important. important. What, what what did the DAO do? Oh, what, what does it do? Okay, so in the crypto world... Uh, what's happening a lot of the time is that we have these uh, two earn strategies, okay? Like the number two, earn. So it could be play to earn, it could be learn to earn, it could be move to earn. And let's let's fixate a little bit on the move to earn because it's it's my favorite at the moment. But the idea is that move to earn is promoting and encouraging being healthy and fit and actually rewarding you in crypto for those efforts. Now, what they do is, uh, and it's very, very simple, is they have these mobile apps that you can install on your Android or, or iOS devices. And what they do is they set you up a little bit of a digital wallet. Very easy, very easy to go. And then you just walk. The easiest way is just to walk and and to and to accumulate steps on a day-to-day -day basis. And the moment you're accumulating at least, I would say, 5,000 steps, which is not too difficult because most people, whether they know it or not, I remember Mr. Triplett, he, um, he was like, no, I can't do this, I can't do this. And then he looked on his phone and he was like, oh, crap. He was like, <laughs> I walked 3,500 steps today. I'm like, yeah. yeah. You don't realize it, but the average person, whether you are a, a bench or a couch potato or whether you're like a computer programmer, you do have a tendency to walk about 3,000 steps a day. And if you can just push it to five, you find yourself 
in, an, in a position to start earning various cryptocurrencies. But through a lot of, a lot of experience, I did realize that if you want to do this for free, you are lucky that you will earn maybe 5 to $10 a month across maybe six or seven different mobile apps that are promoting move to earn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's doable. And we show, we show a little bit on money quest, how this all works, but it is quite a, it's, it's quite a, you know, you like, you really need to sort of want that $10 a month <laughs> in yeah. order to use all six apps in order to accumulate the $10. But here's the fun fact through our research on money quest, we realized that, if you so much as invest $45, like for example, in an NFT, now an NFT, for those who don't know, it's non-fungible. It's a non-fungible token on the blockchain that uh, means that it's unique. Uh, uh, no one can take it from you. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like buying something in the real world and like no one can take it from you. So um, by purchasing an NFT for $45, suddenly earning just from one app, earning $2 a month, I'm all the way up to $15 a month, okay? $15 a month, which means that you pay off that NFT in four months. Now, the problem is, there's two problems to this. Number one, yes, it's an upfront $45 investment. And depending on where you come from, you might be from the States, that's fine. Then probably $45 is nothing. But you might come from maybe a European country or an African country where $45 is a crap load of money. So, yeah. so that's, that's the first issue. The second issue is even if you have the $45, you've now got to from where you, where you are based, like take me, I'm in South Africa and now I got to find, I got to send $45, which in my case is about maybe 850 Rand. I got to send that somehow and convert it into Solana. Uh, Solana tokens, which because uh, this particular move to earn app is on the Solana blockchain, I've got it now. But 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 fun fact: when you want to convert fiat currency like rand or dollar or euro, or whatever, you can't just convert straight into Solana. It, it, it's not that easy. Okay. You have to first convert yeah, it into it crypto. crypto. Yeah. You have to first convert it, uh, convert it into a generic cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Or like Ethereum, or like or like a stable coin like USD, um, USDT, or whatever. So from there, now now that it's in a some sort of crypto form, now you convert it into what you want. Like I want Solana, and I want um, uh, um, so so we convert it into Solana, and now we. But now that's not good enough. Now you got it, Solana. Now you need the wallet in order uh, on 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 the on the move to earn app in order to send it to and once yeah. you've got it into that wallet and this is where most people get lost is that okay i've got you you can't have solana in that wallet in order to purchase that nft you've got to convert it into their token which in this particular case is a walk-in token so now you've got to convert solana into walk-in which means you've got to use some sort of a middleware exchange it's a nightmare it's okay. a nightmare. But if you I mean, just, lost all of that. Just talking through it is like yeah, taking brain cells, cells out of my brain. It's a nightmare. <laughs> and so once you get through all this nonsense, yes, you finally get the NFT. And now you will be able to earn uh, about $15 a month for that $45 mm -hmm. investment, which means you pay off your investment within six months. And then everything afterwards, oh, sorry, not six months, four months. And then everything afterwards is pure profit. Yeah. yeah, but to get people through that process is a nightmare. So what yeah. we did was we said, okay, instead of you as an individual facing those demons <laughs> to get right. from point A to point B, what if we have a team that or you don't have to follow all those processes, but just invest, just just purchase, and and give us the money to do all that stuff. And we have dedicated people that will go and earn the cryptos that we will go and assign the NFTs. We'll purchase the NFTs. We know how to do it. We do everything on our side. We'll purchase the NFTs, assign them to trusted individuals. They will go out and they will go and earn these $50 per person of one, $5 per person. So they'll go and do all the work. And because you invested, you are a part of a community 
that will receive 50% of the profits. So it's like, go out and explore Web3 on your own or join MoneyQuest. Let us do the hard work. <laughs> Help us right. fund these things. And and we'll split the pot 50-50. You know? Yeah. And, and that's what we... So what we did was uh, a week ago, we opened a DAO. A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. And we said, listen, yeah, we need we, we want to purchase four NFTs for the Walken app, which is a move to earn app. Uh, each of these NFTs are about $50, $55. If we can purchase these four, we have four trusted individuals. I'm one of them, by the way. And um, and and these four will be able to earn about $15 a month. So that's that's $15, 30, 40, that's $60 a month earnings, okay? That will uh, that split halfways, and that means fifteen dollars goes to everyone. It gets split across uh, the investors, based on how many they invest, how much they invested. Because when you invest, uh, you get shares. But and and then the other fifty percent goes to the f the people that actually did the work, right? Because it's only fair. And then um, and and before you know it, in four months, you've paid your money off. Yeah, and now, yeah. and now, after that, the investors just get passive income yeah. from the efforts, which is brilliant. I mean, you're looking at about a two to three hundred percent return on investment per year, and that goes all into your um, into the from the DAO into what? So the DAO runs on the DSO blockchain. So the right. DSO blockchain stands for decentralized social, and right. it, it, it is the most affordable blockchain right now. It is the most affordable blockchain. So I mean, it's even beating Solana, and the way they use the way they use their keys and everything, it's it's, it's just it's working great. So what happens is right. we started the DAO on the DSO blockchain because we didn't want to penalize or make things expensive because we have to cover gas fees. Now, for those who don't know, gas fees in order to even move anything on the blockchain, you have a transactional cost, and that cost is called gas fees. So. Uh, on many blockchains, especially Ethereum and Bitcoin, those gas fees sit in the dollars, which maybe for Americans might not be too too problematic, but for the rest of the world, uh, one dollar is a lot of money. So yeah, um, w uh, with 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 the DSO blockchain, gas fees sit in one ten thousandth of a cent. Now that I can work with, right? And that the rest that of the world can work, work with. Now, I can go to my African. <laughs> Uh, uh, neighbors, and I can say, listen, yeah, yeah. that's a blockchain where you don't have to vomit money and 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 yeah. go, you know, in order to be a part of this. So yes, we have right. a DAO, and you can and you can um, sign up to do so for nothing. So it's a and even start earning right away. So yeah, it's like, yeah. and we got a guide like, on that. I mean, we are not money quick. We have a guide on that. There's a guide on how exactly. To do that. Yeah, uh, we we give you two options. So um, the 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 DAO the DAO runs on the DSO blockchain. And one US cent gets you one token. Yeah. So 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 people might be afraid to say, but I I you know I don't have fifty dollars or I don't have a hundred dollars. Well, the truth is the way we designed it, one US cent is enough to be a part of this. And you're not only contributing and allowing people to be able to earn from these crypto uh, incentives, but your 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 contributions give you voting rights. So you have a say in how we move forward in this DAO, which is how awkward is that? You know, it's not it's not just decided by us. You you have a say, and the kind of say you have depends on how how much you've invested, which is so cool. Talk about the, the DAO coin there. Well, how, that's what that's what gives them the voting rights, right? Yeah, so in, in, in no matter what blockchain you're on, whether you're on Ethereum or whatever the case may be, any DAO, and, and again, DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Decentralized meaning that uh, there's no central server like uh, like like Microsoft that's running this 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 entity, right? It's decentralized. Everything that you do in this in this in this organization uh, exists across thousands of computers, and no one can shut the DAO. There's just no waste. So decentralized. Autonomous is means that a lot of the decision making is automatic. So they, they, it's not about you have this Xcode team on top and they are they decide what goes or whatever the case may be. Autonomous means if if the votes come in automatically and you propose something and people come in and vote, there is an automatic instruction that ha is handled on the underlying blockchain 
that says we're going to do this. And usually, most of the time, it's the transferring of funds, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's basically saying, okay, most of the people said we're going to move $100 from year to year. And there's uh, there's not a person that has to manually go and do it. The It's automatic, autonomous. And then organization yep. can stand for entity. It's it's just it's just um, it, it it could be a community, it could be a nonprofit, it could be a PTY, it it could be anything. It could be a, a a VC, and all it's saying is an organization represents any of those things. But instead of running this organization on Microsoft Office three six five, you're running this organization on a blockchain. So that's what our yep. DAO is, and we created a DAO to allow the raising of funds to empower individuals to go and earn cryptocurrency uh, using these strategies, that these guides that we created on MoneyQuest. And then what happens is whatever they earn, we split the pot 50-50. And what happens yep. is when you purchase, the, the way to contribute is that I'll come in, I'll come into this DAO and I'll say, I've got $50, I want to throw $50 at this DAO. Okay, cool. So when I contribute, whether I give Bitcoin, whether I do fiat contribution, it doesn't matter really. Uh, you, you can come in from multiple angles. But once you've, once you've come in, your $50 gets converted into DAO tokens, which is like a crypto token. I mean, it, it, it's like whatever, sh uh, uh, Shibu or, or sh uh, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't matter. It's a crypto token. So, But that token represents one US cent, uh, depending. And, and you will receive, like, for $50, uh, for, for $50 that's 5,000 tokens, right? So you'll get 5,000 yep. tokens, and, depend, and, and your percentage ownership in the DAO depends on how many other people came in and invested, right? So you might have 5,000 tokens based on your $50, but a total of $500 was raised, which means you only have, what, 10%? So, yep. so you have like a 10% ownership or, or, or say in the DAO, in the organization. So when it comes time to saying, listen, we need decisions and, and a total of 10,000 coins were raised, but you only have whatever, you know, or 100,000 coins were raised, but you only have uh, 5,000 is when you vote, you affect that vote. Percentage wise, yeah. reminds me. Of reminds me of um, like stock ownership, right? It reminds me of that a little bit. Like, well, that's where this have, comes from, right? Yeah, they you have just, percentage. Yeah, they just they just following what happens in the real world on the stock market, but they just decentralized it. So like, right. they didn't try and recreate something. They took what works and they said, "Well, we're just going to decentralize it now." So a lot of these mechanics happen in the real world on on Wall Street or in the stock market, you know. So. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's. I think if anything, it's just become a little bit friendlier on the yeah. Web three space, and you don't have to like sweat because you needed to have like ten thousand dollars to be a part of this. Now yeah. suddenly one dollar is enough, and and it's decentralized, so you're not worried about someone coming in and closing it down on you. Yeah, and and I mean the 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 funds and like even your tokens and everything, it sits inside your own digital wallet, so no one has yep. access to that. Like, even if we had to shut down, which would be the worst, like, like for example, if these had to shut down, worst case scenario, you still got this wallet that has all these tokens. They might not be worth anything, but it's yours. You know, <laughs> it belongs to you. No one, uh, it, yeah. didn't, it didn't disappear when the, when, the, when the entity shut down. And I think that's the mindset change, right? But yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you went online and, uh, uh, and um, let's say um, Craigslist had some sort of gamification where uh, right. as long as you're on Craigslist, uh, Craigslist where you will earn points and these points might have a monetary value. It's all good. But if Craigslist uh, goes down. Shuts down. You lose everything. Yeah. It's not. It's not decentralized. It's centrally. It's centrally managed. So, yeah. so I think that's the mindset, you know, of yeah. of yeah. Um, the difference between what we're what what we're doing now on decentralized blockchains versus what you could do on centralized uh, ecosystems. The same with like any banks in a, in a sense, because you're 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 putting your money in there, and you're insured in many cases in the U.S. Anyway, you're insured, um, but uh, only to a certain amount. So anything above that amount, you're still out of luck. So they are the 
<laughs> that's why a lot of these banks are closing because they're getting caught doing illegal things or they're getting, um, you know, they're, they're charging a bunch of fees that don't need to be charged anymore. And, and people are sick of it. <laughs> but I mean, even take a look at a lot of the banks that, that were promote, uh, that were trying to provide funding for a lot of the cryptocurrency initiatives in the past few weeks that landed up getting nailed by, uh, what the fed, who was it? Well, the, um, a lot of, a lot of things probably will be changed. SVP, SVB, as uh, what Sean says. But yeah, any of these, any of these organizations that are out there, um, SEC, everything, everyone that's looking at uh, uh, DAOs and at crypto and everything, um, that are all looking at uh, either treating it like a bank or treating it like a security, they all have, they all have their own opinions of like how it should be, how it should be taxed, how it should be run, how it should be secured, how it should be insured, all these things. And, you know, sure, things, I think things will change in the future, you know, in a few, in a little while. But um, I think the way that it works now is important because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people that are just taking their money and t- taking it out of fiat. They're putting it in gold, they're putting it in silver, and they're putting it in crypto. Yeah. And then they're high, and then they're putting that crypto on their own wallet somewhere, doing something, you know, whether it's a, a, a separate, um, you know, hard drive that they're keeping in a lockbox or whatever, yeah. you know, they're doing it to stay it's away from. Happened. Yeah. And even the fintech, even the fintech companies that are out there now, all the online uh, quote unquote banks like Ally, Chime, uh, Rally, a bunch of these, you know, they've cut out a lot of, you know, to make it simpler, they've made it so that you cut out a lot of the fees, right? If you if you um, get to a limit where you know you can't charge something, they don't charge you a fee for. It. They just don't charge the the payment. They're just like they tried to get it, it was declined. That's it. End of story. And it's it's just that simple. And then there's no fee, so you're not paying for not having money, which always bugged me in a banking sense. You can't. Why should I pay you if I have less money? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So. You know, I think these NFTs is a is a is a great way to kind of just look at the next thing. I mean, now now I know we're going to talk about this, and maybe we'll talk about it more next week because uh, we're we're getting close to the end here. But I wanted to um, mention that you know, with these NFTs, you know, it's also a great opportunity for a lot of people. I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk is on online every day talking about how to use these NFTs as um, as tradable and you know tradable. Um, tokens or tradable entities, and they're you know he he started his business in um, trading cards and and stuff like that and and went online and just, uh, made it easy for people to trade. And NFT is just uh, uh, like just an, another generation of that. And so with all these people who are doing the uh, um, you know art or music or anything like that and and trying to deal with big companies to try to get them online and try to sell them and try to uh, market them and try to do all these things, you know, you can, we, you know, we can start this idea so that like they can control their own royalties. And we're working on that. We you know, background of money quest. I think, I think there's a, there's going to be a guide. I don't know how soon it will be, but just a little teaser that that's coming soon. So that makes it easier, you know, and hopefully we can do it in a way that's, um, that's like super easy, but one way or another, we're going to try to make it, we're going to try well, to make I think it work. There's, 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 there. there's two aspects to that, right? Uh, the first one yeah. is that the technology is there to promote yep. this kind of seamless opportunity for artists, mm-hmm. whether they be music, whether it be actual arts, or whether it be video, it doesn't matter. It's not good enough that the underlying sort of decentralized architecture is there. We have to take it a step further and we have to design the interface in order to make it seamless for everyone. So that's the first leg that we yeah. have to. And I mean, uh, for everyone who's listening behind the scenes in MoneyQuest, we're sort of sitting there and we're saying, okay, well, uh, we, we need to now formulate and, and find a way to make this work. So uh, that's yep. the one thing. But the second thing is, and and this is what's more most important, is that uh, we, we've got a bigger issue that we need to solve. And we're, we're, we're grinding in order to make this a reality. But that is, we've got... Like, for example, OpenSea. OpenSea e- e- exists sort of over here, 
and they integrate with two or three or five different blockchains and they are like the NFT marketplace. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. Now, they are the ones that, uh, that, like, for example, if you release a track that you claim is your song and you now convert it onto, uh, into an NFT on a particular blockchain and now you're like, okay, I'm protected because I created this NFT, it's me. This is my song. Right. Right? Well, uh, here's the problem. Was that your song? You know, are you claiming it? Uh, uh, number one. Number two, you might be verified on blockchain A, but you don't mean squat on the rest of the 99 blockchains. That's a problem. Yeah. So, so, so what's happening is, yes, to, a, to an extent, OpenSea is sort of saying, we'll say, we will use our platform and we will dictate whether you are verified and a true owner of this or that in the next story. And I think something that you and me want to do on, on MoneyQuest is saying, but what if, what if there was a, platform, a, a, a blockchain agnostic verification to say, we don't care. We don't care which blockchain you created this NFT on. We will use relevant checks to verify you. And you can be you can be blockchain agnostic, and we can verify that you that that is in fact uh, uh, your NFT or or your asset. You own it. You created it. You owned it, or whatever. And and uh, no matter where or no matter which blockchain you sort of want to run around on, uh, we are a we are a hands off uh, a verification engine. That says you own this and now you can go and promote it. And people can come to us in order to verify that you are a trusted owner of this asset on the on, on a blockchain. And, and 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 the difference between what we want to do, maybe, and what OpenSea or Rarible or all these places are doing is that we don't we are not a marketplace. So we have no reason. We have no uh, how can I put it? It's it's not it's not like you're a verified musician, and these are your verified tracks if you come to our marketplace, which is what happens on OpenSea, and which is what happens yeah. on Uber. If you come to us, we'll verify you. Whereas what we are trying to do is we're trying to say, no, 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 nonsense. We don't need that. We, we will verify you independently, uh, whether you, whether you want to use... Uh, we don't have a marketplace, so you don't even have to use us. We're just there to sort of say, how can we prove that you are in fact the musician who created this track and now give people the surety that if they buy into this, that they know that you are a verified person. And I think that's what we're trying to figure out, right? We, we, we yeah. working on that behind the scenes in, in money quest. We're trying to figure this out because once yeah. we can get that right. And once we can build an interface, which we are already working on as well is any artist can come on and say, this is who I am. This is my, these are my assets. This is what I've done. And, uh, uh, and you can be a part of this, right? And uh, by purchasing the NFTs and by, and by supporting them, promoting, uh, investing in them, giving you like so many different avenues. And then through MoneyQuest, we can promote them as well. Because you're either, you're either the someone who's producing the assets or you're someone who wants to invest in the assets. And either way, it's sort of like MoneyQuest is like, well, we'll, we are for both, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know, and, and I, I think, think this is the thing, thing that decentralization, decentralization is supposed to do for people, people. Yeah. right? It's, it's the, it's, it's the, the thing, thing that, that, you know, you find, you find, you create your own thing, thing you can own it and you can, and you can sell it yourself. yourself. If you, you go, go on YouTube, YouTube you, have you have to get, get what? A hundred thousand followers or something like that before you can even. On YouTube, you have to, you have to get a thousand subscribers on your YouTube channel and you have to generate at least 4,000 hours of watch time in one year. Okay. That's a lot. That's a lot. And I know, I know TikTok is another thousand people that you have to put on there. Even TikTok, you, you, you're like, you, you, you have to generate about four or 500,000 views to get about $10. I posted something on the DISA blockchain a couple of weeks ago and I earned $50. Nice. I mean, it was one post. And yeah. I didn't need to get verified. I, none of that. I just posted something valuable. It appealed to a lot of people. And I got 50, I, I, I got a $30 tip from one person. I will say that. I got a $30 tip from one person. But that's the point. 
on Deezer, on, on, yeah. on, on, on YouTube, okay? Oh, on YouTube, video okay. could have added so much value to someone that they had $100 to throw at you to say, thank you, you saved me weeks. But they can't. But they can't. They, because yeah. you are not a monetized YouTube channel because you've got to go through the prerequisites. When I joined the DSO blockchain uh, and I started posting content over there, I started earning on day one as a nobody. I earned a couple of dollars for a couple of posts that I made. And yes, it did take me a couple of months before I started earning like $30 tips, but I didn't have a central authority telling me when I can and cannot earn on their platform. Yeah, it's a big difference. What I hate though, and, and this, uh, this is sort of like just my opinion, everyone, is that the uh, YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, they force you to be a certain kind of person in order to become an influencer on their platforms. And that I don't appreciate. That's true. I don't appreciate that. The the you you want to deliver a message, okay? So I like I want to come onto YouTube and I want to say, listen, yeah, I want you to realize that there is a way forward for you. Okay. And there's a way to make money or there's a way to do this. No, that's great. That's my message. But now, now I have to hurdle through YouTube's algorithm. And now I have to be subscribed now in order to see this, in order to do this, in order to be that, whatever the case may be. So that you sell, sell, sell. Can learn how to do this. Now I'm going to be that damn person on YouTube. And I'm not that person. Yeah. yeah. Diagnosed with Asperger's. I can't be that person. But I've got to be that guy in order to compete on YouTube. And that's nonsense, man. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. really? But yeah, I, I think uh, these webinars, these uh, we're going to do it every week. And yep. this was just an introductory webinar. But yep. I look forward to the coming weeks where we're really going to yep. dive into money-making strategies and crypto yeah. and Web3 and just all Get into of some of the guides stuff. a little bit. Yeah. Just show, show people, people what, what, what they're, they're doing, doing for people. And... For that. Yeah, I, I think yeah. This, this was just really sort of like a... How's it to everyone? The uh, it's a start. It's the yep. start of something awesome. We're going to distribute yeah. this everywhere on YouTube, podcasts, Apple, Android, everywhere. And uh, now's a great time to be a part of the Money Quest team. You know, so so this is pretty cool. Okay, okay cool. cool. We'll, we'll sum, sum it up, up now and just, just let everybody go. And uh, thank, thank you again, John, for all your amazing knowledge and all your amazing efforts. efforts. And uh, I, know I know that, that uh, we're going to do a bunch of great things here. Awesome, Keith. Thanks so much for running this, man. You are the bomb. Have a good one. Take, Take care, care guys. guys.